Now we'll move on to discuss each of the four main tissue types in the human body, beginning with connective tissue. In this section we'll discuss the tissue proper, the connective tissue that's embryonic, as well as specialized connective tissue. Connective tissue is the most abundant body tissue. It consists of cells and a matrix of ground substance, as well as fibers. Connective tissue has abundant matrix with relatively few cells. Here's an example of a connective tissue matrix. Cells that are contained within this tissue include fibroblasts, which function by secreting matrix, macrophages, which perform phagocytosis, plasma cells, which secrete antibodies, mast cells, which degranulate and produce and release histamine, and white blood cells which migrate from blood in response to infections in the area. There are three separate groups of connective tissue. Connective tissue proper, embryonic connective tissue, and specialized connective tissue. Let's begin with connective tissue proper. This includes areolar connective tissue, which is collagen and elastin fibers, and they function to hold organs and epithelia in place. Dense connective tissue. This forms the ligaments and tendons. Elastic connective tissue. This is present in the lining of arteries and gives their stretchability in response to changes in blood pressure. And adipose tissue, or fat tissue. This provides energy storage and insulation. The second type of connective tissue we'll discuss is embryonic connective tissue. These are present only during early development and are not considered part of the adult connective tissues. This category includes A. Mesenchymal connective tissue. This is the ground substance matrix that will develop into connective tissue later on. And B. Mucous connective tissue. Its function is to form the walls of the umbilical cord used to deliver oxygen and nutrients from the mother to the developing baby's circulation. The third major type is specialized connective tissue. This includes blood, osseous tissue or bone, and hyaline cartilage. Bone and cartilage are widely spread throughout their body. They provide support and protection. Cartilage can be divided into the following categories. A. Hyaline cartilage, which forms the ends of bones such as the ribs and the sternum and protect these surfaces from wear during normal activity. The second type is elastic cartilage. This is rigid enough to provide support, yet elastic enough to be flexible. It's located in the ear canal and the epiglottis. The third type is fibril cartilage. This is a dense network of type 1 collagen that's located in the intervertebral discs in the vertebral column. As we mentioned, blood is a specialized connective tissue. It contains a fluid portion known as plasma and the following formed elements or cells. Number one, red blood cells. These function to transport oxygen. Number two are lymphocytes, which are white blood cells. They perform cell mediated immunity. Number three, monocytes. These form macrophages in the tissues and are involved in the inflammatory response and phagocytosis. Number four are granulocytes, known as basophils. These are involved in the inflammatory response. Number five are also granulocytes, known as eosinophils. These are involved in allergies and certain infections. And the sixth type is also a granulocyte, known as neutrophils. These phagocytose microbes during infections. Let's take a look at bone structure in more detail. Referring to the image, the outside of the compact bone is covered in prostium. The interior is spongy bone. The osteocytes, or bone-forming cells, are built directly into the matrix. 30% of bone matrix is made of collagen fibers, with minerals around those collagen fibers. The osteocytes, which are responsible for mineral turnover, are built directly into the matrix. Bone is divided into compact bone, which provides strength, and spongy bone. The outside is covered with parosteum, and throughout the bone is canaliculi, 
which are microscopic canals that travel through the bone. Osteocytes, bone forming cells, have radiating processes that project into the canaliculi.